Hey everybody, Rodamon here. Thanks for tuning in to Oxygen Not Included episode 65. So, I am going to make a few little changes to my uh, ship setup before I launch it. Much to the chagrin of, well, probably many of you. I apologize for this, but there are some little changes that I want to make uh, before I feel ready to blast off. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to stop loading um, steam into it just for a minute. Uh, so let me explain these changes. So these changes are to effectively min-max my space launches. Uh, that's why I'm doing it. Um, so in order to, whoa, sorry about that. In order to talk about min-maxing, we need to talk about the ani-assistant.com slash tools slash rocket calculator. Or just Google oxygen not included rocket calculator. That should be enough. So what this is, is, is a calculator to determine how much fuel that an engine is going to need to launch to a certain distance. Um, for the first launch that we have... Let me, let me make sure this all looks right. Yeah. So th for the first launch that we have, we are going to be traveling out um, 10,000 kilometers, right? This is the first launch. And there are five research studies to be done at the location, which means that bang for my buck, it's probably best to get five research modules on this craft, which is exactly what I'm going to do. That also means that... Well, as you can see, I'm going to run out of room a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, what I'm going to be doing here, crazy enough, is to be removing a lot of what I've already built. Uh, as making iterative improvements on my designs is part and parcel of what I do. Um, But I think by the end of this episode, I should have a full launch. Now, another thing I wanted to do is to design a steam escape hatch. So, let me explain. Once the engines have uh, been loaded up with enough steam, there will still be steam in this gas pipe. And it's going to start cooling down. And when it phase changes, it's going to damage... Uh, the pipe and destroy it So what we what we're gonna want to do is to have some sort of escape hatch like this uh, where Here we can uh, we'll we'll bury it. So it looks nice We want an escape hatch like this with gas shut off to a vent like this um, So that we can very very easily and effectively ditch the spare steam that we have uh, and then what I'm going to do is something like this. Uh, no. Something like this so that um, the steam has a chance to go... ...into the rocket, but then if the rocket's full... It just dumps to space. So this is the escape hatch that I'm talking about. And for a signal switch, let's get one of those. This uh, will switch on this ex escape valve of sorts. So we're going to want that as well. Really, really straightforward building project, but it needs to be built. Up here, I am indeed going to start breaking down all the stuff I built. I know, crazy. Uh... But I'm just, I'm just going to design this a little bit differently. Um, it's going to require a little bit more manual labor. But given the limited amount of um, launches that I actually make, I think it's fine. And then on top of that, the only doors that really concern me... Well, I'll be changing the bunker door setups as well. I guess is what I should say. So, we're going to be modifying this area pretty considerably. It also means that the routed um, 
uh, the routed plumbing that I have here is, well, going to be removed as well. Actually, yeah. Oh. Like that. All of this is going to get removed, so. I know. It's a shame. But it's for the best. So all this means is that my plumbing will sort of skip this radiant section. And go straight into the tuner. And let's get this research module built. Just little changes. So this valve over here is going to be bypassed. Um, another thing is when our steam engines do launch, we'll have uh, puddled steam down here. So it's going to require some mopping, or maybe we just ignore it. I'm not really sure which I'm going to end up doing. But that will pose a, a repeat problem. So while while we're working up there, uh, let me just make sure that everything in the base is good, and it isn't. We're going to need to filter some water. Uh, another thing pointed out was that the temperatures for... <clears throat> so, phosphorite here melts at a temperature that the hydrogen here might reach. So I have to be very, very careful to make sure that w everywhere where I'm currently storing um, phosphorite for the uh, the Weeswarts doesn't heat up too much. Because if it heats up too much, it, the phosphorite will turn to a liquid uh, like this, and, well, that sucks. Because, you know, it's less phosphorite for me. So we have a little phosphorus... Uh, here in the petroleum water lock and you know that's probably gonna happen a little bit so we'll just keep an eye on that make sure that doesn't continue to happen if it continues to happen we have to remove or remove the bins um, accordingly so this is the last research module that we're gonna want And this is going to be construction priority 9. And then at the top of this will be the command capsule. And as you can see, the bunker doors um, pose a bit of a problem. So I'm going to have to raise the bunker doors. But I'm also going to have a bare minimum amount of bunker doors. So it's not too much of a problem. So let's go ahead and work on... An insulated pipe alternative. Uh, so this is intake. So uh, something like this would work. If we had a liquid bridge. Here. And piped it like that. And that would skip uh, this run here. Oh, yep, there we are. So instead of having all the bunker doors that I currently have, uh, what I'm going to do is, as you can see, the spaceship shuttle, whatever you want to call it, is seven across, roughly. Which means I really only need two bunker doors for my launch bay. 
Everything else is just unnecessary. Uh, and that's exactly what I'm going to build. Just, just two. So I'll build one here and one here. That covers the launch. Right? Because you have then space on this side, space on this side. No problem. Um, all these other doors are going to get broken down, just eventually. And uh, I'm going to want it set up like this. So that I can then very, very, very easily uh, clear the bay area and sweep it. Um, I'm going to be, yeah. All right, so this I'll, I'll start to work on this. And then that means all of this here can just be bunker tile. Something like that. Yeah, let's make it uh, symmetrical. For those of you who care. Something like this. So that we can dig out the bay and then open and close it at will. So the open and closing would just, uh, just like that. Perfect. Okay. So this is sort of the construction project that I had in mind. Let's get that underway. Checking out this area here. The hydrogen is a good temperature. And the coolant coming out of it is a good temperature. So, yep, that's all working. And then... Pretty soon here, we'll reroute our coolant uh, to where we want it to go. There it is. All this piping here is no longer needed. And I think I'm going to bother rebuilding this ladder. Just so that it's a straight, nice run. Uh, what would this be? Builders? Buildings? There. Alright. Looking good. So we'll get this up top built to protect our interests from destruction. And then once we have all the bunker tiles built, we can break down the bunker doors, which aren't going to be necessary anymore. We have to uh, dodge some shots. <laughs> That's fine. And this allows me to have a larger rocket for more of a payload and uh, also a minimum amount of clearing. I'm not going to bother doing auto sweeper. It's just not that important to me. I could have a sweepy dock, but again, I think... Oh, you're stuck. Uh, the launches that I have are going to be so infrequent that it's not all that necessary. Alright, you are stuck. Copious free time stuck up there. Oh, print up some salt water. If I'm printing up salt water, I gotta make sure that I run a filter cycle. 
And these guys can't reach anything anymore. Uh, what? Yeah, we have some people that are a little marooned. Oh, I see the gap. Come on, go over here. So, yep, a little, um... A poorly treated dupes. They're gonna have some stress for a bit as a result of, uh, my neglect. Oh, you know what? I know what's going on. There. Now they're free. Right, made a mess. In your suit. Okay. So there will be a little bit of a cleanup. Not a big deal. Okay, we have a run of a ladder now. And now as we're starting to build this back up, uh, I can remove the bunker doors. So there will be a spill here. Yep. Clean it up. And the mesh tiles that we have to protect our water lock, uh, well, they worked. Oh, no, they didn't. <laughs> oh, I can't wait until I don't rely on that anymore. All right, we'll rebuild that. It's fine. It should have been, you know, it's almost not even necessary, that liquid lock, because... Everything outside the base is safe. It's just a, it's just an added precaution, but as you can see, it's all floral scent. It's all filtered oxygen. So, it doesn't really pose that much of a threat. Um, but I'll fix it anyway, because I can. So, the petroleum that we used here, and the crude oil that we used here, um, I will sweep up and put it right back into the lock, which means removing this from a valid, uh, bottle up to your point. Okay, I was making sure that we filtered our water, because we are desalinating a whole bunch of stuff. And let's focus back to space again. Looking good. So, this whole... Uh, this whole swath here can be broken down. That whole area there. It might require me to build some ladders, temporary ladders, to have access to break it all down, but all that can be broken down. Okay. I'm not going to give my dupes too much other jobs at the moment because they're uh, they're a little busy. Okay, how's my ranches doing? I've not paid much attention to them at all. Four critters, one critter. So so bad, really, really, really bad. Um. keep them going. What about my hatches? Zero. And I probably don't even, yeah, I don't even have eggs any anymore for them. Uh, so the stone hatches, I'm not even going to worry about it because I have so much coal that I don't think it's much of an issue that I uh, don't have stone hatches anymore. But the Drecklets, the Drecos, I should say, um, they do make me... Um, They do contribute to the amount of uh, sort of precious resources that I have access to, um, namely phosphorite, so I want them back. Uh, but speaking of which, 
We need iron. Okay. So let's make some iron to make steel. Alright, so hopefully these guys forge ahead quickly so that I can get a launch going. That's the hope. We're going to uh, gather a whole bunch of steel from these bunker doors, which is good. We're reclaiming a ton of this steel here. As you can see. And then our plumbing... Uh, this plumbing is getting backed up. Uh, you know what? I don't even need this bridge here. This bridge is uh, slowing it down. Let's get rid of the bridge. Alright, breaking everything down. And the bridge that it just blew up. Let's have it be a straight path, because I think it already has directionality. Alright. Gaining a lot more material. I can also, uh... Add mesh tiles all the way out like this. Just to allow us to walk on it. And the idea here is that this signal switch, I'll put a signal switch uh, here. This will be for these doors only. And I'll just be able to switch them on and off at will. Okay, so now the coolant is taking turns. Which is fine. Wow, surprisingly enough, no one got super stressed from being stuck out in space for a bit. Alright, well, we're almost done. The other important things is just plastic ladder to reach this area up here. And everything up here is going to now be, like, uh, priority sevens. Just, the, just so that it gets done sooner than later. Let's check on our water. Yep, water was done. We had all that uh, salt water that just desalinated, so we have a huge batch of desalinated water. These uh, Drecos, I dug this so that I could wrangle them. Just to make sure that I have uh, enough population to replenish itself. Now, I do expect my hydrogen supply to run out. Like, legitimately fully run out. Um, I wouldn't say soon, but like, soon-ish, because I have some dormancy here. Right? This is not active for 30 days. And this is not active for 23 days. So there... Are, it's, it's quite likely I actually legitimately fully run out. I could make ethanol. To fuel my base or just rely more on natural gas or something. I have yet to really decide. I do know that that day is coming though. Oh, this is unreachable. How about we put it somewhere unreachable? Uh, signal switch here. Like that. Don't think it was a great idea moving my ladder before I was really ready to. Oh well. We'll get this ladder built and then it will be a moot point. Alright, so the escape hatch is correct. It's set up. And now we're just waiting for, you know, the rest of the little projects that I have queued up to be done. 
we're very close to being able to launch our first mission. So the calculator that I'm using, the Ani Assistant Calculator, says that I'm going to need um, 695 steam to launch five research modules and a command module to space. So 695. So that's how much steam I'm going to want to put into the rocket engine. And no more. Any more than that, and it's wasted and unnecessary. <laughs> Oxalite. I'm going to need Oxalite soon. For totally different novel reason that I've never needed before. If you're wondering, uh, one of the space rockets is Oxlite powered. L let me go over the research now. Oh, that's priorities. Uh, so, here's the research. Solid fuel combustion, solid cargo. Uh, this is a petroleum engine, a liquid fuel tank, and solid oxidizer tank. Gas, cargo canister, liquid cargo tank, hydrogen, liquid oxidizer, biological containment, and sightseeing. These are all things that you can research once you have uh, space missions. So speaking of space missions, let me put in a virtual planetarium. I'm going to put it uh, here. It requires a, a little bit of power, so it should be on a good network. And let's hook this up. And then another thing I'm going to want to do is a storage bin here, and this storage bin is going to be for data. Alright, so now we're finally getting to the point where this is getting built how we need. Good. Now everything up here is mineable. I want to break this stuff down before I remove the flooring. Some of this might be unreachable. Alright, looking good. Now what's going to be important is that I just manually sweep up the stuff that would otherwise fall if this bunker door opened up. So it doesn't land anywhere sensitive down there. Great, done. We'll break down the rest of this stuff. Set this up to sevens. Whoa, close call. Signal switch uh, got built and then immediately turned on. Not great. <laughs> Gotta get rid of that. Gotta close it. So I already signaled it to be closed. If you signal it to be closed immediately, uh, it doesn't let anything fall through, which is nice. Okay, this plastic needs... I need to swoop this up. Because uh, the this plastic flooring is going to burn up if I don't. And then once we remove these ladders, I will build the command po pod at the top. Uh, so some of this should be swept as well. Off of the plastic. This doesn't really need to be mesh. It doesn't actually matter what material it is. And then anything that fell um, down here, I'm going to sweep up to. Because I, I don't want anything heating up uh, plastic or glass or overheating anything. That's sort of important. 
Because, yeah, this plastic... I don't want... I don't want my structures to turn to naphtha. Alright. And here it is. Boom. And then we're going to want a gantry. I'm going to set my gantry on the other side. I'm actually going to adjust it. Like this. That'll look a little nicer. So all this will be construction 8. Uh, the gantry is going to need power. Uh, so I'll run... I'll remove this cable. Which is no longer necessary. Uh, let me just make everything look a little bit nicer. As well. So I'm going to put this cable underneath the ladder. Run power to the gantry. And then the gantry is going to need a signal switch as well. So I can open and close the gantry uh, on demand. Nice. Well, looking good, looking good. So there's the gantry. Now the gantry, if you don't retract the gantry with the signal switch, uh, the rocket when launched will destroy the gantry and require some steel. Not a whole lot, but require a little bit of steel to fix and replace. So it's best that you don't destroy your gantry. Uh, now that I'm moving this cable, I need to rewire it. And one of the reasons I still have these old sweepers is so that we can remove, um, regolith from areas like here where we don't want regolith. And then we can put it in this box and have it drop to like an infinite storage, uh, spot. Like we're doing here. Right, so... That's why we kept that. All right, so the rest of this construction project, let's have as eights. Uh, some of the sweeping is still nines, so the sweeping... Let's change the priority of these to sevens. And, and yeah, there's even more sweeping to be done now. There's some steel that got dropped and whatnot. Nothing too, too important. Now, another thing that you could see is your space scanners can also detect incoming spacecrafts. And the reason for this is when spacecrafts return, they don't queue or anything. They just land and they will destroy um, bunker doors or bunker tiles or whatever, whatever's in their way, they will destroy. So it's going to be critically important that you pay attention to when your spacecrafts return from flight. Because if you don't... Um, they will smash your bunker doors, and that's a very, very, very expensive repair cost, right? I mean, to, to have a bunker door blown up, which costs uh, 500 steel, mm, not great, not great. So that's something to pay close attention to. Speaking of steel, right now, refined carbon is my bottleneck on steel. Eh, no problem. I could make enough refined carbon to last me a lifetime. Or several lifetimes. So we're very, very close to being able to launch our first space mission. Woo! Rise, you almost took a hit. Luckily, uh, dupes only get injured from taking hits. They can take more than one and survive it. So it's not like immediately fatal or anything like that. And we're almost done adding the conductive wires. Yeah, it actually looks like copious free time took a hit. Alright, so the wires are back, but not to the gantry. As you can see, the, um, the two kilowatts that we can offer uh, means that when we move the gantry, uh, the aqua tuner has to turn on or off. So one of the things I could do is to have a... Um, a knot gate.
yeah, let me make a little knot gate here so that when one's on, the other's off, and when one's off, the other's on. Like that. That way it doesn't, you know, there's no, like, power shortages or whatever. Alright, we are ready to launch other than the fact that we don't have fuel. So, we are launch we're loading up um, 695, so let's turn this on. Allowing, uh... Allowing steam to be loaded up into our steam engine. And we'll blast off soon. It's exciting. First launch. I'm just tidying up the rest of the space that I need to tidy. So here, as you can see, we can open up our bunker doors. Just make sure that if your space scanners are detecting incoming, um, incoming strikes, that you're ready to close these bunker doors. Otherwise, everything underneath these bunker doors will get destroyed. Or could get destroyed. Um, gold amalgam, sure. Actually, you know what? This knot gate isn't really all that necessary. What I might want to do is just have a, um, have a signal switch for the aqua tuner. If I, if, so, if I want to turn off the aqua tuner, I can. Uh, that would just be better, rather than to hook it up to the same switch. So we're getting pretty close to having the launch. We just need to fuel up the steam engine and to make sure that the steam that we're loading into it isn't going to phase change. Now, once it's in the engine, it does keep its heat pretty well, but just make sure that you're not loading in water that is just barely steam because if it phase changes, it will start to destroy, you know, everything. All right, let's check in on our... All right, Wieswarts, that's 100 degrees Fahrenheit, that's good. And down up here it is 70, so that's great. Yeah, and here's some phosphorus that, uh, that, that was phosphorite that, uh, got, you know, destroyed. Okay, so taking a look at our Drecklets, Drecos, whatever they are, um, yeah, it looks all right. So now, it's just a matter of when this gets loaded up. So our first location is just going to be this here, this mission. So destination not selected. Boom. Selected. Then next it's going to tell me that I need an astronaut. I'm not going to put an astronaut in until we're ready to go. And it's beyond reach because I don't have enough steam loaded up. Um... I don't have, so here's my virtual planetarium, which will do the orange colored research once I have data banks. So the way this works is that when you launch a mission out to space, each resource module will do some of the research here for this many data banks. And then these data banks can be used to unlock new uh, space research. So, they're essentially, if you take a look at the destination map, everything beyond a hundred kilometers or a thousand, ten thousand kilometers rather, um, can't be reached on Steam. Uh, you can use the calculator to determine that, but it's true. You you basically you can't get out here on you can't get out to like the twenty two uh twenty thousand kilometer range on Steam alone. You're going to need to use um solid boosters or some other fuel source. So your first two missions are likely going to be one and two, these two carbon asteroids, to do as much research as you can to unlock methods of further travel, as that's absolutely 100% required in the long run. Otherwise, you're, just, you're not going anywhere. So how close are we? We are, we're, we're almost there. We're almost there. And then this escape valve is going to be necessary so that um, all excess steam doesn't sit 
in this circuit here and and leak and get destroyed. It's also going to be necessary to keep an eye on when um, you fill up because otherwise you're just going to be wasting steam sending it out to this gas vent. You could, if you really wanted to, um, create some sort of like um, Atmo sensor right here so that you know when steam's starting to escape. And then when the Atmo sensor triggers, uh, you like turn your circuit off. But for, for now, because I, I don't expect that I'll have to set up too many uh, space missions, I'm just going to pay attention to it myself. You know, use my own eyes. Another thing I wanted to do, one of the goals of this series is to set up the monument. So I'm going to work on that. So here's the monument base. Uh, I'll build it, I'll build it here. I'll build the monument next to the virtual planetarium. This requires a ridiculous amount of resources, steel and obsidian, um, but it's a goal of this whole series, so I figured that makes sense. And don't worry, I won't have a cliffhanger. I will do the launch before the end of this episode. I'll have the episode go long, as usual. And I'm just going to have my dupes keep cranking out steel as much as they can. So if you take a look at the other monument requirements, this one requires um, a bunch of ceramic and five more tons of steel. And then the head requires glass, which I don't have a whole lot of, and five more tons of steel. So it is a very steel intensive building. Uh, one of the things about ceramic, uh, well, I don't have ceramic, right? So... Let's make it. So ceramic turns clay into ceramic. And I think what I'm going to do is turn one of these. So this just has coal in it. Turn one of these into clay and clay only. Uh, what would that be? Um, so that the... Uh, auto sweeper can automatically make ceramic on its own. And do I have a spare wheezewort? No, I don't. Because that's going to start to heat up if it's cranking out that much. So let me try to find a spare wheezewort somewhere that I can use to keep stuff cool. Uh, maybe this one. You know, better yet, uh... Yeah, these are these areas are uh, ice cold, so I can move it from there. Okay, so we are at max pressure, and as you can see, the escape valve is working. Uh, so what I'm going to want to do is let's just set this to a ridiculously high temperature, which is unobtainable, like five blah blah whatever. It doesn't really matter. Turn off the steam here, and then I can actually I don't even really need this gas shut off, do I? No, I really don't. Let's get rid of it. Because once once it's full, it just bypasses and goes straight out like this. Okay. Then, astronaut, sign curve. Priority nine. Start to open the, um, the bunker doors because there's no incoming uh, hits, strikes. Pull back the gantry door. The sine curve is already in here. And uh, the path should not be blocked. Oh, there is this mesh tile here. Is uh is a blocker. But it the, I mean I'll it, it'll get destroyed, so I don't even care. So let's launch this mission. Oh, is it requiring me to blo uh, remove this? For real? Here we go. Okay, missing gantry? No, uh, the gantry's here. Okay. Launch mission. 
So, I'm gonna slow it down. When you launch the mission, uh, tons and tons and tons of the steam get blasted out the rocket. As you can see, there's gonna be steam out here and it's going to leak water everywhere. This rocket passes through open bunker doors no problem. Oh, it did clip the gantry on the way out. It broke it anyway. That's funny. I'll have to move, uh, physically move where the gantry's installed. Um, and then, that's the colony achievement. And then, uh, if you take a look at the telescope here, you can see that it will take 2.7 cycles to run the mission. And then after 2.7 cycles, uh, the rocket comes back and I better have these two bunker doors open for when it returns. Uh, you can set up a scanner to do that automatically for you, but I'm just gonna do it up manually. All right, so let's, let's, uh, let's, I'll build a gantry once it lands. But there it is. That's all the time I have for this episode. I guess I didn't really have to run all that long. That's our first space launch. And then next episode is obviously going to be about doing high-tech rocket research. If you have any feedback for me, let me know in the comments below. I really hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'm very excited to see where I go from here. Uh, just a little reminder, of course, let me splash that up. One of the goals of this series is the home sweet home, which requires me to build the giant monument. And I'm going to be working towards that. It's not likely that I am going to be able to do the great escape. Uh, not likely at all. But uh, with that said, I still do want to do volcano taming. And then possibly incorporate some of your feedback into other projects that I work on in tandem with the monument. Thank you all so very much for watching. I will catch you next episode. Farewell, everybody.